folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a movie review this week. It's a family fantasy comedy that came out on June 5th, 1987. It's also another childhood favorite of mine, simply called Harry and the Hendersons. A story about a family named the Hendersons who just um, got out from their family trip so all of a sudden they ran over what seems to be a Sasquatch, which later George, who was played by John Lithgow, named him Harry, which is right here. And I always grew up watching this movie when it aired on TV. I watched this on HBO when I was a kid. I think we also rented it on home video. And then um, we also have the soundtrack as well on LP, yeah, which is a record. And I think we also had it on cassette too, but it's been lost for a very long time. And I started watching this movie all the time on TV um, when I was a little kid before we later had a TV series that followed that came out uh, in 1991. Yeah. Yeah, Kevin Peter Hall played uh, Harry, you know, the Sasquatch, also known as Bigfoot. Yeah, that's nickname for Sasquatch. The same actor, who was only seven foot tall, went on to do the film Predator that same year, where he got to play um, the alien creature known as the Predator. So this, this is like uh, an interesting year for Kevin Peter Hall. <laughs> yeah. This is of course the, the Blu-ray release that I picked up that came out in 2014, which is directly from the special edition DVD that came out in 2007, celebrating its uh, 20th anniversary at the time. It has all the extras that's ported right there on the back, Yeah, as you can see. And um, also, <laughs> it's now in high definition. It actually, looks very good on Blu-ray. Very good upgrade. It definitely improves the quality over the previous DVD releases out there. In fact, it even looks uh, like a better upgrade to the 2007 release too. So, looks as good as that's I remember. Also, um, Rick Baker had won an Oscar for um, Best Makeup Effects for this movie, too, for creating uh, Harry the, the Sasquatch. So that's, that's a good nod right there, because Rick Baker has been always been best known for, for doing all the makeup effects on every single movie and TV show out there, you know, like Star Trek The Next Generation, you know, the Star Trek movies, and all the other films that follow um, everything and yes I even forgot to mention that he also worked on the movie Enchanted where he did the uh, the old hag uh, makeup and that was going to be created for uh, Susan Sarandon's character which she which she played the the evil queen yeah I, I forgot to mention that in, in the Enchanted review and sadly, Rick Baker has just recently been retired from doing uh, makeup artistry. Uh, in fact, he retired in 2015, which is last year. So, well, it, it's its time. You know, he needed to move on. So he figured, you know, it was the best that he can do at, at his age. But it's a shame because he's definitely very creative. He's one of um, the most living legends out there to actually create a lot of uh, animatronics and makeup and all of that, all these costumes that he had. It's just it's pretty sad now, just thinking about it. But he's still with us, though. That's all that matters. But who knows when. Yeah. Also has a digital copy included. Uh, I already took it already, so <laughs> there you go. Looks just as good as the, the Blu-ray release. 
But I always enjoy this movie a lot. Um, I never understand why this movie gets such a such mixed reviews from critics. I mean, in fact, Rotten Tomatoes gave it a 44%. Metacritic gave it a 41%. IMDb gave it a 5.9. That's pretty low for, for a family film like this. Because this was very memorable. Um, it was very sad at times. I mean, yes, there were some moments that, that did choke me up. But it definitely had a lot of fun to it. I mean, all the scenes with Harry was just amazing, hilarious, and <laughs> just plain fun. I mean, I mean, it's the kind of movie where, what was it like if um, suddenly you spotted a creature that's been a sighting for years and everybody who had saw it had begun to, to discover some, some living creature hanging around in the house or around the, the streets and anywhere he goes it's like they thought this whole fame was just uh, one of their wild imaginations or something like that yeah I mean granted I know we were getting sightings uh, of Bif a Bigfoot that's being headed around the Pacific Northwest and all the forests out there so they figured you know they're not lying or they may be, but, well, you never know. Yeah, in fact, they even had a, uh, a poster which, yeah, it didn't look that great. I mean, yeah, that was a poster where they had um, Harry uh, with large, big eyes that's hazel, and he holds uh, a rose on his hand in between the those large fingers. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And then the tagline says, According to science, Bigfoot doesn't exist. When you can't believe your eyes, tr trust your heart. Yeah. Well, I, I guess, you know, Spielberg at the time, you know, wanted to come up with uh, posters just so they wouldn't show the character. Uh, so they wouldn't show the creature. Kind of like when he did it with uh, Gremlins, when they couldn't show the Gremlin which is uh, Gizmo, or when they did the movie E.T., or when Spielberg did the film E.T., you know, they couldn't show uh, the alien E.T. Yeah. E. So that that's just the way to not spoil the, the surprise until you see the movie yourself. But that's how it was back in the 80s, but nowadays you can see the creature for yourself because they just put it on every single uh, copy of all these uh, DVDs, Blu-rays, VHS tapes, Laserdisc, Betas, I mean, you name it. <laughs> Every single physical copy out there. And digital copies, too. So, it, it was a common thing, but they, they had to do something. Didn't really care for that poster, but I could see what Spielberg was coming up with. Because, after all, Spielberg did produce this movie. And... William Deere, who went on to direct films like uh, you know, Wild America and uh, all the other films that follow, um, actually uh, came up with uh, an interesting idea about the, the discovery of Bigfoot. And I thought this was interesting because it's rather rare. Anyway, so let's get to the film. It stars John Lithgow, Melinda Dillon, been best known for her role as the mother in uh, the movie A Christmas Story, and which surprisingly enough there is a reference in the movie, so we'll get to that. And she, of course she was in the film Close Encounters of the Third Kind, which Steven Spielberg directed. Margaret Langrick, Josh uh, Rudoy, uh, Kevin Peter Hall, which they also have Rick Baker, um, working for the puppeteers along with Tom Hester and Tim Lawrence and they also got Fred Newman to do the voice of Harry and all the vocal um, effects that he had to use because after all he's been known for doing mouse movements and also he's simply the voice actor who did Skeeter Ballantyne and Mr. Dink on the TV series Doug 
And of course, he did a lot of stuff too. Like he was in the TV series uh, Between the Lions. He even hosted a, a, a talk show uh, in the early '80s uh, that aired on Nickelodeon called Livewire. I'm not so sure people remember that, but I guess if if you were born in the '70s or '60s or something, I think people would know. Lainey Kazan, a great actress who went on to do other films including the My Big Fat Greek Wedding. Donna Michi, who was in the film Trading Places, and later did the voice of Shadow in Homeward Bound, The Incredible Journey. Yeah. Also the movie Folks with Tom Selleck. Yeah, this, this was before he passed away. Um, later on, I believe, in, in late 1993. Uh, David Sherchett, who's been best known for playing the villain in Executive Decision. Yeah, hard to believe that that's the same guy. And M. Emmett Walsh, who was in the film Blade Runner. He was also in other uh, movies as well, like, like Narrow Margin, the remake. And he was also in an episode of Home Improvement, which, ironically enough... Uh, he would be in a film called uh, Christmas with the Cranks. It's co-written and directed by William Deere, who once again had went on to do the film Wild America. And he also did the film Angels in the Outfield, the remake, with Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Christopher Lloyd, Danny Glover, Tony Danza, and Taylor Negron, and all the rest. And, uh, yeah, Brendan Fricker, too. And he also directed uh, Mr. Troop Mom with uh, George Lopez. The movie began set in the Pacific Northwest, where we meet a family known as the Hendersons. George, who's played by John Lithgow, and his wife, Nancy, who's played by Melinda Dillon, along with their kids, Sarah and Ernie, both played by Margaret Langrick and Joshua Woodoy. They were about to return home from their camping trip when all of a sudden they ran over something on their family station wagon and it turns out to be a Sasquatch. So George decided to pick it up and put it on top of the car roof and take it home because it was basically a discovery. But of course uh, when he tried to do that uh, he hit the brakes just as uh, the Sasquatch was alive and already scared and he, and and he flew all the way off from the roof and hit on the ground and yeah, he even brought in his rifle just for protection and he decided to put it back up on the roof again and take it all the way home which then the following morning he began to find out that the Sasquatch had escaped I believe that they hid it inside um, the garage, you know, just to be safe. And it came out of the garage and, and wants up in the kitchen, you know, grabbing some milk and all these other foods uh, from the refrigerator. And, and started crashing the entire place, you know, started um, creating all these uh, arches on the door, uh, arch that they got here. Even ate. Um, Sarah's um, collage that she's been saving for her 14th birthday. Yeah, she got so angry that <laughs> apparently <laughs> it made him pissed. Yeah, he screams and yells and, <laughs> and actually blows her hair just like that. <laughs> it's just scaring her. So they got out of the house where the Sasquatch is inside and just crashing through frames and actually taking off all the dead animals off of the walls and bury them outside. Yeah, just trashing everything. Yeah, started crawling up up to the stairs with his big feet. While George was ready to call the police, telling them that uh, they had Bigfoot inside the house, but of course they wouldn't believe him. So there you go. That is until uh, their nosy neighbor named. Um, Irene Morfett, who's played by Lenny Kazan, just came over, brought in her dog, 
which looks a little bit like uh, our dog <laughs> named um, Lucina. Yeah, it's just a small puppy, but um, came over. She just began to check what's going on because there's, you know, there's always a lot of dogs around, and um, she began to notice that um, the refrigerator was there, already open, with a lot of stuff, and and notice some of the, the kitchen seemed pretty smashed up and even though <laughs> you know George was just tricking her thinking that you know he's doing exercise and all that yeah because because the floor was all moved up <laughs> yeah because they had to put um, the Sasquats inside of the um, the basement which already all the wooden stairs is has been smashed up and yeah, of course, along with put Ernie inside, you know, just to keep it safe. So anyway, I mean, they thought that the creature was dead at first, but it turns out it was alive, and they, they knew better. Problem is, you know, they had to stay home until they try to figure out what to do, so either they, they can even sell the, the Sasquatch and be able to become famous, so they could earn more money this way. And you know, they can be on the news or just give them up. That was his choice. So that's what he chose to do. And apparently he actually named um, the creature simply Harry. And you know, just before uh, he ran away, just as uh, George was about to bring in some uh, fast food, all the burgers and, you know, like, you know, regular burgers and, and fish, yeah, for uh, the family and uh, Harry. Yeah, until he ran off, just ready to drive him all the way back to where he came from. But he just ran away all the way through the streets and the suburbs, all the way around uh, the Seattle area. So apparently, uh, George is basically having a hard time trying to look for Harry everywhere. Even though he, he does work uh, with his father, who's played by M. Emmett Walsh, yeah, George Henderson Sr., <laughs> at, 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 a, um, yeah, at a shop called uh, Henderson's and Son. Yeah. yeah, where they have all the guns, ammo, and all, all the other stuff that they need you know, for hunting. Yeah, it's basically a hunting shop. But um, but since he was trying his way to find Harry so he could be safe, he went to the North American Museum of Anthropology to meet uh, Dr. Wallace Whiteworth, who was played by Don Amici. I mean, apparently he started out as a clerk, but in reality it really is him, because he was an expert on Bigfoot. But, of course, you know, he was just talking to him about this, but unfortunately he had to end up buying a lot of stuff to to go with it so they continue his search but of course um, he meets a hunter who's about to go after you know, Bigfoot which turned out to be a man named Jacques Lafira who's played by David Suchet so he became so obsessed with it that he just he keeps on finding all the hairs that he found in the woods yeah, and then he still continues to search on it but of course you know no one believes that it's really the hair of, um, of the Bigfoot that he ha had found so, yeah so he becomes a laughing stock but no matter what he does he's just gonna keep on tracking down but he became so suspicious about this that he wants up going to the Henderson's house to find out if they met the uh, Bigfoot, so that way, because he was beginning to become really close to finding the creature. So, after all this time, George was on the news because he began to find out that um, that Harry actually attacked uh, a bicycle rider, and then, then, then at night, uh, Harry winds up in the town. We started looking at all the TVs around, and and he began to discover that he just found George. 
on TV, so he wanted to be able to see him because he's already feeling very lonely and, and very sad, too. I mean, he has nowhere else to go, and he's very lost. And I know even earlier on before that, you know, he was going around into other neighbors, you know, grabbing all the food from the, the refrigerator, scaring them off. Even saw uh, the neighbor next door actually uh, cooking some chicken soup, and there was even and while next to it there was uh, a couple inside a jacuzzi. You know, he's like looking at both sides until one guy just had spotted um, him and and scared him off. Yeah, yeah, they were all scared, but yeah, there were a lot of news reporters around going for the search. But after that. The police officers had arrived on the scene and was ready to, to grab Harry until suddenly we see uh, George, yeah, he was even creating those sounds that uh, Harry makes, saying, oh -woo! Oh -woo! <laughs> I, lo I love those impressions that he made when he did that. He's actually thinking like how he is, so every everybody around, you know, all the the guys out there just grabbing all the guns, just searching, hearing the sound, because they're ready to go after him. Yeah, there's even a guy that, that dresses like Rambo. I, I don't know how on earth did that happen. But <laughs> and, of course, um, LeFou is just ready to chase him around. So, George finally uh, found Harry, which Harry wants up uh, inside the... Uh, garbage truck at this rate inside the dumpster which says Emerald City Trash and <laughs> yes there, there's like a nod to the Wizard of Oz there yeah that's where um, LeFou was about to chase him and then he felt then uh, Harry arrived from the dumpster and just dumps him all the way down there and then Harry found George and George found Harry and then they they ran off from the garbage truck and then went back inside the station wagon to escape. Well, LeFou got arrested, all covered with garbage. <laughs> yeah, because there was a scene where he was in jail, you know, just ready to be bailed out, but he was all covered in garbage, so all the prisoners are just walking around back and forth once he runs around because, you know, he smells awful. And, which, of course, um, George had brought Harry back into their house and <laughs> already covered in garbage too. <laughs> so they gave him a bath inside Irene's pool. It was all dirty and filled with hair. And yet they cleaned him off and while watching the Adams family. <laughs> I thought that was a clever bit right there. He was even smiling too. <laughs> Dr. Whitewood had came over to their house, you know, just about to prepare for dinner. You know, having some roast beef or or having some vegetables as well until you know Harry arrives and, and Dr. Wrightwood had discovered with Harry and he was very surprised. So of course he had to stay over uh, during the night so they could prepare to to bring Harry back to where he came from into the forest. But then LeFou had came over, you know, came from jail and was ready to um, go after Harry, yeah, which all the roses had been taken off from Irene's garden. Yes, he gave them to um, Sarah, you know, just for for an apology from eating uh, her collage. Yeah, even pushes her into the bed like that, <laughs> just for all time's sake. So when LeFou had arrived, just as Irene had discovered that uh, that he took all the roses off. <laughs> Then suddenly she spotted uh, Harry and yeah, she fainted. And then uh, they ran off into a car chase, which, yeah, they had to go all the way into the freeway, all the way, going all the way through the forest. So that way they can, they can take Harry back to where he came from, which had that very sad moment right there. And, um, which then LeFou just comes around, um, chasing them around. Because, yeah, you know, already, you know, 
LeFou had just took over their station wagon while you know, George had to drive off with uh, Wright Woods' uh, truck. Yeah, because I know the truck and their station wagon has a, a huge bump you know, whenever they put Harry inside. Yeah, always opening the, the doors and all that. Yeah, they had to trick uh, LeFou by creating all these uh, giant uh, Bigfoot tracks. So that way, you know, he'll get so confused that he won't be able to catch Harry until Harry suddenly jumps in, already hiding, and attack him. I mean, just when he was already being attacked by uh, Irene's dog, that uh, he gets attacked. So there you go. But then he changes his mind. You know, he was afraid that he was going to hurt him. Yeah, things turned out for the better. So now, Harry had finally found his home with a lot of uh, Sasquatch around. And just after they took a family photo with, with Harry and their Hendersons. And there you go. That's the movie. And I really enjoyed it. It was a fun film. Never get tired of it. I always remember all the scenes that went into the film. It was just hilarious. I mean, <laughs> you know, um, I always remember the moment was when the, they started using the Wolto scoping and the end credits, you know, while they play the song Love Lives On by Joe Cocker. Yeah, God was a so. And he's a great, talented singer. Um, they basically show all the scenes uh, that were inside the movie. But they started using rotoscoping, you know, meaning that they use a, a technique for animators to, to trace over the motion picture footage. So, like, every scene that you see in the frame, you can see um, animation that's being moved around frame by frame, which makes it look more realistic than ever. Yeah, because George is also uh, an artist himself. You know, he started creating all these drawings of the Sasquatch till he finally gets uh, Harry Wright and he did and he wanted to become an artist but that this is where we get to that reference to a Christmas story where he explained to his wife that ever since he was a kid during Christmas he wanted some art paints but instead he got a BB gun yeah I mean, he was with his father, you know, he just loves to uh, sell guns and all of that, because that's why he has his own shop, you know, for hunting. And he just, I mean, that's the, that also explains why he has the rifle. <laughs> so he's, he's basically uh, following in his footsteps. Yeah, and which is really interesting, too, because M. Everett Walsh is only uh, 10 years old. Uh, older than uh, John Lipgow in this movie so it's like if that's certainly the case though he probably would have been a lot younger than uh, the actor himself but I guess they had to go for that because John Lipgow is very old too I mean he's he's getting there now I mean he's already in his 70s but he's always been a good actor I mean, in fact, he was very good in this movie, too. I mean, considering the fact that he played creepy roles in the films like uh, like the movie uh, Blowout, uh, the Brian De Palma film, which then he later went on to do that movie called Raising Cain, which is out now on Blu-ray from Shell Factory. And he also did the film Ricochet, and all these other films that he does where he plays all these creepy roles. Yeah, even Cliffhanger. Yeah, he played the villain in that movie. But here he just plays um, the fodder in the film with a good heart. And he wasn't over the top or anything like that. I mean, granted, I know he screams, <laughs> but he does, um, he has a kind heart. I mean, yes, he knew about his all, all the mistakes that he made, but he definitely had feelings for the character. And that's how he had. And the fact that he has a loving and caring family. I mean, sister is just basically, you know, you know, just your typical teenager acting all disgusted and all that because 
you know, she doesn't like uh, a lot of gross stuff and all of this, I and mean, she's always been discussed. Well, <laughs> their son, uh, Ernie, turns out to be, you know, just just a typical boy who just <laughs> loves creatures, and you know, he's always um, happy, and yes, he even curses too. Yeah, he even said shit, and, and he's just, and sometimes he does act, you know, rather weird, but deep down of it, you know, he likes to hang around with, with the creature, you know, Harry, yeah, even taught him to watch TV and all this other stuff and everything, it's like, wow, <laughs> a lot of great cast in the movie, yeah, especially, um, uh, Don Lamici as uh, Whitewood, you know, who's uh, an anthropologist who who discovers uh, Bigfoot. I mean, he's definitely an old man to to know everything because he even wrote a lot of books about him. <laughs> and and then you got the villain, the uh, David Chachet, playing Jacques uh, LeFou, just going after Bigfoot, you know, because this was part of his obsession. Yeah. Yes, he is a villain in the movie, but until he changes his mind. I mean, basically, he's obsessed with it, so I could see why. I mean, George felt the same way. Yeah. And Lainey Kazan was very good, too, um, playing the nosy neighbor. Even though she was only there for, like, several scenes here and there. And when something bad happens. And all of that. But the real star of the film is definitely Kevin Peter Hall. You know, God rest his soul, he was a great actor. I mean, he's been best known for being an in-suit performer, having to play uh, roles like, like the alien creature in Predator. And, and of course, you know, Harry. And I think he has done a lot of stuff too, even before he passed away in 1991. I mean, he was also married to... Uh, Elena Reed, and God rest her soul too, because she went on to do the TV series 227 just after she left uh, Sesame Street yeah, in, in the early days. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, and it's interesting that you got Rick Baker uh, creating the, the creature, uh, creating all the costumes and design, the makeup, everything. It took them like six months within the two years be before they finally shot the movie and they got uh, Kevin Peter Hall to wear the suit. Just amazing. It was, uh, yeah. Uh, but the scene that really did choke me up, and yeah, because the, there were sad moments in the film, was when Harry runs away, you know, feeling very sad because he began to find out that. You know, Ernie was started to cry. He didn't want Harry to go, so he ran off and ran away all the way to try to find uh, a place to stay. And he was all lonely. And then a scene where it did make me cry was uh, it sure did too. Was when they decided to bring him back into the the forest you know, into the mountains of of Washington State and the fact that he was telling them that he was warning him that LeFou is about to go after him so he wants them to leave but of course you know he was hugging uh, George and yeah you know, George was already crying as it is too and and then he was yelling at him screaming at him telling them to go and and actually slapped him in the face too and ran off. It was just uh, that, that was a that that scene really got to me really bad. And I know I I think everybody felt the same way too when they saw that particular scene. And I I know they later it's been recycled in several movies that started to use that scene that that followed. But this scene really really got to me. But in the end, you, you know that, um, you know, he is going to leave anyway. He has his own family, so at least he's taken care of. Well, that is until we now get uh, the TV series. You know, you know, originally, 
Harry and the Hendersons was going to be a TV series before it did become a film. But then they decided, you know, it was too good for it. So why not? And on top of that, you know, they were going to be a TV series anyway, so they got one in 1991 that only lasted three seasons, and they got Bruce Davidson, who went on to do uh, the movie X-Men, and he's been in other films too. He was in the movie Long Time Companion in 1990s, and he was even in an episode of Tales from the Dark Side, so he had a lot of work. So he went on to play... Uh, George Henderson along with the family uh, with Molly Cheek and all the rest and it was a good show um, I remember watching it uh, even Kevin Peter Hall got to play uh, Harry uh, one last time before his death and he got replaced by two actors who are just as tall as as he is but nothing can replace uh, Kevin Peter Hall because he always will be remembered by I wish that series was on DVD. I mean, it's been such a long time since it aired. I mean, I used to watch this in syndication on KTTV, Fox 11 in Los Angeles. And I haven't seen it since. I mean, I only spotted like a few episodes here and there online. It was uploaded on YouTube. So if you try to find some, you're only going to get a few. But if they ever have like maybe a torrent or something that's available, maybe there's a chance but it won't be easy <laughs> so but either way um, I'm glad I got this movie um, definitely check this out I mean you always will remember this uh, no matter what but just be aware it really gets to you <laughs> Yeah. I'm Joseph A. Sabora and I'll see you later. Bye.